today we're going to start our visit in Piazza Navona, one of the most important piazzas in Rome and also one of the most famous Baroque piazzas in the world. Piazza Navona stands on the site of the ancient stadium of Domitian built in the 1st century AD for athletic competitions and chariot races. During the Middle Ages, the stadium fell into disuse and was gradually transformed into a market square known as Circus Agonolis. During the Baroque period, Piazza Navona underwent significant architectural changes, becoming a center of Baroque art and architecture. In this episode, we will explore this piazza in depth, show you some of the notable sites you must visit, and of course our favorite places to eat, drink, and enjoy the best view of the city. If you are not subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so before we jump in. One of the most uh, important fountains to visit in this square is uh, La Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi, uh, which is a masterpiece by Bernini. The fountain was commissioned by Pope Innocent X in the 17th century. The Pope also had his residence, which is one of the most important buildings in the square, the Palazzo Panfili. He also commissioned the building of a church, which is dedicated to the martyr San Sant'Agnese. The Fountain of the Four Rivers is a masterpiece of Baroque sculpture and a testament to Gian Lorenzo Bernini's artistic genius. Its intricate details and symbolism continues to captivate visitors from around the world. Designed in the 17th century, it represents four major rivers from different continents symbolizing the four corners of the world as known at the time. Each river is represented by a massive figure carved from marble seated on a rocky base. The Nile representing Africa is depicted as a bearded figure holding a veil over his head, symbolizing the river's unknown source during Bernini's time. He rests on a sphinx animal associated with Egypt. The Ganges represents Asia with a figure with an oar symbolizing the river's navigability. The Ganges sits atop a fearsome dragon. The Danube or Europe is depicted as a mature male figure protecting himself from the sun. He leans on a coat of arm featuring a crowned eagle symbolizing the reverse course through the Holy Roman Empire. Rio de la Plata represents the Americas with a figure reclining on a pile of coins and holding a branch symbolizing the wealth brought by the river, often associated with the silver mines of the Americas. At the center of the fountain rises an Egyptian obelisk topped with a dove symbolizing the peace brought by the Christian faith. It was originally located at the Circus of Maxentius and was later moved to its current location by Pope Innocent X in the 17th century. When you're done exploring the piazza, make sure to wander around the little streets, the little alleys. It's full of nice stores, artisanal shops and restaurants. As a matter of fact, now we're going to take you to one of our favorites, Buffetto Pizzeria. Let's go. I've been coming here since I was a little kid and I love it. They serve the classic thin crust Roman pizza. Um, we ordered a pizza tonga e cipolla, which is uh, tuna and onions. Now, I know it's a particular mix of uh, flavors. Not everybody likes it, but honestly, uh, in Rome they do it a lot and I'm very happy when I'm back here so that I can get to have it again. Grazie, grazie. I have to say that uh, Ravi's pizza looks more beautiful than mine. Here it is. This is the pizza buffetto, the namesake of this pizzeria. This is delicious, exactly how I remember it.
Sant'Agnese contains several significant works of art created by renowned artists. The interior of the dome is adorned with elaborate frescoes depicting scenes from the life of Sant'Agnese by the Baroque artist Ciro Ferri and finished after his death by Sebastiano Corbellini. The pendatives of the dome were painted with the cardinal virtues by Bernini's protégé, Giovanni Battista Gaulli. The main altar is a relief of the two holy families by Domenico Guidi. Death of Santa Cecilia by Antonio Raggi depicts a noble Roman from the 2nd century who was sentenced to death for being a Christian. And the martyrdom of Santa Merenziana by Ercole Ferrata depicting the sister of Sant'Agnese who was stoned to death for opposing pagans who tried to prevent a funeral for her sister and many more. So our impression of this church is that it's so absolutely breathtaking when you get in. It's so colorful. There are different kind of colored marbles all over the place and a lot of um, important statues that depict um, different martyrs. We also came to a small chapel where you can go to see the skull of St. Agnes. I expected it to be bigger because I believe she was about 12 or 13 when um, she was martyred, um, but it's kind of small. Um, but you can come visit that when you are in the church and take your time to look at all of the different um, uh, pieces that you can find here, which are absolutely amazing. from the church that we visited. If you go on this street that has the same name as the church and make a left, then you will find the Aich Hotel. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, <laughs> but it's the hotel where there's the Terrasa Boromini. You can go to the rooftop, which is on the fifth floor, and that's where you find the beautiful rooftop terrace that we're gonna take you to. And from there, you can have some of the most amazing views of, of the city. You actually can go there from 12 o'clock. I think they're open between 12 and 3 and then for happy hour as well or dinner. And it's something not to be missed if you, have, if you are in Piazza Navona. right down from the piazza where we were before we told you that there used to be a roman stadium and right now we are underground in the ruins of the roman stadium and it's really really insane i don't think that we make houses like this anymore because this place is really intact you can see the arches you can see the walls they are from the first century and they're completely intact 
as you know, the city of Rome has been raised because there's so much from the old Roman Empire underneath. And that's where we are now. And we're just amazed by this place. And we're going to explore it a little bit. If you come to Piazza Navona, I, I would highly recommend to see this place. The Stadium of Domitian, or the Circus Agonalis, was built around 80 to 96 AD during the reign of Emperor Domitian. The elliptical arena was primarily used for hosting athletic competitions, chariot races, and other public spectacles, serving as a venue for entertainment and social gatherings. The stadium featured towering tiers of seating that accommodated about 15 to 20,000 spectators. It also had grand entrances adorned with massive stone arches and columns. Despite the passage of time, the stadium remains remarkably well-preserved, serving as a tangible link to Rome's glorious past. So if you go around the corner from where we were, you can see the original level of the city. And to end your day on a sweet note, you can grab a gelato. Here in Piazza Navona, we like Grom, one of our favorites, and I'm gonna grab mine right now. Thank <laughs> you.